All right, so today was the big day for Xbox and Bethesda to have their presentation. Obviously, I had a lot of concerns going into this presentation. What were the games for 2022? What were they going to show off? Did they have enough big announcements and exciting reveals to make me change sort of my outlook on Microsoft? Because I always feel like when it comes to Xbox, you always just have to wait a little bit longer. You have to wait a little bit longer for those big games to come. And, you know, it's just something that it's a cycle that we've seen over and over again and a cycle that a lot of gamers are getting a bit tired with, I feel personally. So did Xbox change my mind about what they are doing? Now, what's interesting about this showcase is after a few gameplay trailers that they showed, they did announce that all of these games were focused on 2022 and the first half of 2023. So all of these games should be coming out within the next 12 months. That does play a role later on in this video, but let's just jump straight into it. We started things out with Redfall. Honestly, it looks a lot like Left 4 Dead. It's a vampire based first person shooter with some occult stuff in it. It looks okay like i do like vampires and cult stuff dracula 2000 is a guilty pleasure movie of mine you know i think it has some potential i've never really been super into the left for dead stuff but i think it could be a little bit of fun that game will be coming out now in summer of 2023 Next up was a bit of a surprise game, Hollow Knight 2. Many people assimilate that game with Nintendo, but you know, it's good to see it at this presentation. It definitely looks very good. It looks polished. It looks more advanced than the first game. This is actually going to be a Game Pass game, so I guess Philly was writing some checks for these. No release date though. I felt like, you know, we may might have gotten a release date during this. I think it's going to be a 2023 game since there was no release date probably in the first half, like I said. 12 months, all of these games should be out and available on your Xbox. A lot of these games, actually most of these games are also Game Pass games, so keep that in mind. A new game from the Rick and Morty creators are up next. I don't know, I, I never really got super into that show, Pickle Rick and stuff like that. Not really for me. Your gun is like this weird creature. It's a game called High on Life. It's a console exclusive for Xbox. It does come out in 2022. I like the aesthetic of it. It kind of reminds me of Journey to the Savage Planet, which is a game I really enjoyed. But once again, nothing too crazy, nothing too monumental. This is also a Game Pass game. League of Legends, Valorant, and other games are coming to Game Pass via PC and mobile. You get some perks, like all champions unlocked and stuff, but I feel like this would have been more interesting if it was available on consoles. Like, you can already play these games on PC and mobile, but now you can play them through Game Pass to sort of get a little bit of a boost or something. I don't know. I don't play these games, so I don't really know how it works, but it just kind of seemed like a, a non sort of thing to me. Like it wasn't really that big of a deal considering you could play these games already, but they are coming to Game Pass via PC and mobile. So Xbox owners, sorry about that. I And you know, I thought we all hated Riot Games because you know, they were bad people, but hey, I guess time heals everything and money heals everything. Plague Tale Requiem was up next. I think this game looks pretty cool and I liked the first game. I thought it was really fun and this game definitely feels like it has a bit of a higher budget um, compared to the first game you know the first game was okay it was a little bit rough around the edges but this game definitely seems to have more of a focus on a bigger budget and more of a focus on action more so than just strictly stealth which I think is very cool now there is still very heavy stealth mechanics in this game but I think the addition of more combat is a good thing this game did not have a concrete release date it will be a 2022 Xbox Game Pass game now, next up was arguably my favorite announcement from this show, and that is Forza Motorsports. They're not calling it Forza Motorsports 8. They're just calling it Forza Motorsports. I'm guessing it's sort of like a reboot of the Forza Motorsports franchise. If you're unfamiliar with the differences between Forza Motorsports and Forza Horizon, Forza Horizon is essentially the more arcadey stuff, whereas Forza Motorsports is the more simulation-based stuff. And this game looks freaking awesome. They showed off so many different types of racing from like, you know, standard circuits to standard track cars to drag racing and stuff. The cockpit view looks great. The graphics look so much better than Gran Turismo 7. Like it is it is literally night and day. It looks like a generational leap almost between these two games. Like you can make Gran Turismo 7 look good, but you know, there's so much more into this game. The weather effects themselves look insane. There's like a day and night cycle that's in real time and like the backgrounds are impacted by it. They showed like a fair that was going on in the background. And then as it got into nighttime, like the fair, like actually like lit up and stuff. There's lots of different types of racing. They're saying it's the most technically, technically advanced racing game ever made. They've completely overhauled the driving experience. They overhauled the physics experience. There's new tire compounds. So you can have like racing tires, slicks, or just comfort tires and stuff like that. There's a fuel management system. There's car damage. Car damage is in this game. You can destroy the cars and 
you know, you hit something and it actually looks like you hit something, unlike in Gran Turismo 7. There's ray tracing. This game looks amazing. I know I'm gushing about this game, but this was by far my favorite announcement for this, but there is one little drawback with it. It is indeed not a 2022 game. It is a spring 2023 game. And that, I don't know, man, that kind of felt like a knife in the gut. Obviously, it's not that big of a, a time frame difference, but we're starting to look at 2022 and it's like, are we getting a big game from Microsoft in 2022 for the Xbox? Because right now it doesn't seem like we are, but maybe we are because Flight Simulator 40th Anniversary Edition was up next. It's coming out in 2022, November, so maybe this is Microsoft's big game. I don't like flying, personally. Um, I, I don't like being up in the air, so it's not a game for me. They added some Halo stuff into the game. I don't know. Maybe they should focus on adding Halo stuff to, to Halo Infinite instead of this, but, you know, it's cool. Whatever. Overwatch 2 was shown off next. It looks fun. It looks like more Overwatch. I don't really play Overwatch. I played Paladins because it was free. Overwatch costs money, but this game, Overwatch 2, is actually going to be free to play, so I might end up checking it out. This game will be coming out on October 4th of 2022, so a good third-party game there. They showed off a game called Aura Story Untold. It was a new real-time strategy game. I wasn't really interested in it. It looked like a CGI trailer anyway, so whatever. Bethesda came out next. There's an Elder Scrolls Online expansion pack, some more Fallout 76 stuff, just very little interest to me, so I didn't really pay attention and jot down many notes about it. But yes, if you're a big Elder Scrolls Online fan or still playing Fallout 76, there's new content coming to you, and it's coming pretty soon. Forza Horizon 5 DLC was up next. Now, as much as I love Forza Motorsports, I don't really get into Forza Horizon because I kind of want it to be a sim, and I, it's not. It's an arcade racing game, which is fine, but I think when you have these beautiful graphics and stuff, it's like, shit, man, if this was a sim, more sim-based, that would be super cool, but I know many people love Forza Horizon 5, so no disrespect towards you. Hot Wheels DLC is coming. Very arcadey, very sort of over the top. Arc 2 Vin Diesel edition featuring his family was up next. It was just CGI nonsense. It's a 2023 game. I, I don't care. I, Arc 1 sucked. Like, it took forever to make that game actually, like, run sort of decent. So I have zero faith in Arc 2. Scorn, which is also known as the new tool video. I know the piece just fit because I want to fall away. Um, yeah, it was shown off and... It literally still just looks like a Tool music video. Go watch a Tool music video and you know exactly what I am talking about. This game is coming out on October 21st. Maybe this is the big Xbox game. I definitely have some reservations about this game. They're still not really showing a lot of gameplay. They just show like some creepy elements. You know, the environment itself looks very drab. I don't know. It could be okay, but whatever. Flintlock was up next. Um, I think this game had some potential. It looks like an action adventure, you know, first person game, or not first person, uh, single player game, excuse me, set in a sort of Middle Eastern area or a deserty area. Um, comes out in 2023. The combat itself looked okay. You know, I think this game does have some potential because that's kind of an area that Microsoft and Xbox in general kind of lacks as the single player experience games that both the other consoles kind of give you, so I think this does have some potential. A new game from Mojang was up next, the uh, people behind Minecraft, and it's called Minecraft Legends. It comes out in 2023. It's kind of like Minecraft, but it's more of an action-adventure building game. I mean, it looks pretty much like you would expect it to look. Nothing too crazy. I, you know, Minecraft, I don't, I don't get down with Minecraft, but... You know, there's millions of children out there who love it. Minecraft Legends 2023, your favorite streamer that panders to children to have your parents steal their credit cards so that they can give them money. They got something to be excited about. Some weird ass mech game was up next. It's called Lightyear Frontier. Comes out in spring 2023. You like harvest crops and stuff in a mech suit, but then there's like some action y, adventure -y stuff. It looks like literally Rune Factory, but you're in a mech suit. I, I, I don't know, Mech Warrior maybe instead of this, but it's called Light Your Frontier. Like I said, a spring 2023 game. Gunfire Reborn comes out in October. Once again, another four player action, cell shaded, first person shooter where you all cooperate together. I'm, I'm very tired of those sorts of games like some of them work but most of them don't i don't need to see another one now in the next game was actually something i thought was pretty cool it's a game called the last case of benedict fox it's a 2d sort of horror style action 
platformer game. I definitely really like the vibe of this. It almost looked like a bit like an old, you know, PC side scrolling adventure game, but it was much faster and more fluid. Maybe like a bit like um, flashback or something like that. I don't know. Something about it just stuck out to me. I really liked what I saw from it. It is a 2023 title. Next up was arguably the worst game from this presentation. It was called As Dusk Falls. It's an interactive story style game, but I don't understand what the hell I watched with this. Like, is it a picture book or is it like, you know, real time stuff? Like they would show, it was literally like three frames per second. Like they would show like a still image and then another still image of it kind of advancing a little bit. And there was a little bit of movement in there. It honestly made me like nauseous watching it, like getting motion sickness. And I don't get motion sickness from like anything. I could play VR forever. Something about this game just really made my stomach turn. And I don't think it was the content itself. I think it was the visual style of the game. I don't know when this game comes out. I don't care when this game comes out because this game can burn in a fire because it literally made me sick. Nakara Blade Point is coming soon. It's evidently has over 10 million people playing the game but i've literally never heard of it it's a battle royale style game but it has a very japanese style to it like lots of samurai swords and stuff i think it actually looks pretty decent um i might check it out obviously it's going to be a game pass game there's there's some potential here i'm not too big in battle royale stuff anymore but this might be something i end up checking out pentiment was a new obsidian game that was up next and it's like remember when obsidian made like good good games and fun games because this this looks this looks nothing this looks like nothing it looks like a small indie studio and no disrespect to a small indie studio but it looks like a small indie studio made this game and this is like their passion project or something okay that's cool but when you're talking about obsidian i think you you, you expect a little bit more just a little bit more just a little bit more meat on those bones and there definitely was not a lot of meat on those bones. Grounded 2, or actually, no, it's just Grounded was shown off next. I remember playing this game like two years ago. It was way too reliant on the survival, more so than the exploration. It's like, honey, I shrunk the kids, but like a survival sim. I didn't really get it. Now it has just a full story instead of existing. I don't understand releasing a beta like two years ago and then just being like, oh, wait, here's the full game. Comes out in September of 2022. No, thank you. Next game we had was a game that looked like origami except it was a lady instead of a dude and you fought mechs instead of a ninja it's called Erebon. it comes out in 2023 okay diablo 4 that was a pretty big announcement i will say got a cinematic trailer followed by a gameplay trailer i did like diablo 3 you know i thought it was a pretty fun game this definitely looks more like diablo but you know more prettier like it definitely looks a lot better than diablo 3 looked and the gameplay honestly looks really good they've actually changed it to a massive open world now and of course you could play with your friends and have people jump in and stuff like that there's five different classes um i did see some people on twitter complaining that one of the classes was removed the fifth class is a necromancer i don't know i think this game does look cool you know obviously it's a multi-platform game but it's still a cool game to show off and this game comes out in 2023 See if Thieves stuff was up next. No, thank you. I played this game four years ago with uh, Dreamcast Guy and Spawn Wave. I did not really enjoy it. They've added a lot of stuff into the game, but I played it four years ago. I don't need to play it again. Ravenlock was a title that was up next. It looks like somebody played The Legend of Zelda and was like, what if we put like Alice in Wonderland in it and kind of mixed it together? I did think this game looked interesting, though. It was definitely a game that had a lot of potential. It's a 2023 game, obviously not a big AAA game or anything like that, but it was still pretty cool. Um, a new game from the guy who did Limbo, not Chicken Limbo, but Limbo was up next. I've never played Limbo or anything, but, you know, it looks okay. It has a similar graphical style to a lot of games games that we've seen thus far we'll talk about that a bit more at the end of the video it's a game called cocoon it comes out in 2023 wolong was a game that was up next it's a new game from team ninja and they really didn't show any freaking gameplay like this was a game that i was super interested in when they showed it off i was like is this neo like what is, what is this game and then they said it was a new game called wolong and then they were like yeah this is wolong it's pretty cool but we're just gonna show you some cgi instead of gameplay and it's like holy shit man come on this is one of the games you're focused on gameplay in this presentation this is one of the games that i would have liked to have seen you know i would have liked to have seen the gameplay of this game but okay comes out in 2023 persona is coming to xbox various persona games are coming 
I apologize if I don't get the, the subtitles correct. Essentially, it's Persona 3, Persona 4, and Persona 5 Royale. Yes, it's not the vanilla versions of Persona 3 and Persona 4. I didn't write down the subtitles. I'm not a Persona fan. Don't, don't crucify me. But that's very cool for Persona fans. All these games will be available on Game Pass as well. The first one is Persona 5 Royale coming out on October 21st. Joker is now on Xbox that's kind of cool i guess and then we had a surprise guest come out jeff Keeley's boyfriend hideo kojima came out next and he said that they're making a game with xbox and it's something that he's wanted to make for a long time and there was there was nothing no concept art no uh which wouldn't have been enough by the way no concept art no no gameplay no cgi no sort of indication on what you're gonna do in the game what style of the game it is no there was nothing there was nothing so i was kind of like okay that was that was kind of pointless i mean it's cool yeah phil was out there talking to him they were in different areas of course kojima did not come to the americas for this event and then we got the piece de resistance the final show piece being starfield now you might be saying to yourself well, what about some other games we'll talk about them in a minute but starfield was the final show piece and i don't know i don't I don't know how I feel about this game. Like, obviously, it looks like Fallout in outer space. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's what we all pretty much expected. Instead of things like radiation to worry about, you worry about your oxygen. But looking at this game, it just felt... I don't know, something just felt a little bit off with it. You know, the frame rate didn't seem, like, super smooth. I actually thought it was my stream buffering, but no, everyone was saying the same thing. The, the frame rate looked a little bit choppy, like... I think it looks cool, but I don't necessarily feel like it's wowed me like other Bethesda projects have. Games like, you know, Skyrim or games like uh, even Oblivion and stuff like that or Fallout 3 or Fallout 4. There wasn't really that big wow factor with this game. Um, it definitely feels a little bit like No Man's Sky as well. There's some, you know, a lot of things you could do in the game. Evidently, it's a very large game. I'm not quite sure if that'll work in its favor or in its detriment. But, you know, you can customize your ship. You can fly around in your ship. You can battle in your ship as well. Of course, most of the game does take place on land. There's all sorts of stories going on and stuff. I just don't know. I felt like the combat, there was just something off about the combat. The more and more they showed it off, it just felt a little bit janky, a little, a little bit off. But, you know, they still have time to clean up the game. Obviously, this game isn't coming out until 2023. They did not give it a timetable. They didn't give it a release date or anything like that. They've just learned their lesson from missing 2022 but this was the final show piece the run time of the show was about 95 minutes and uh, yeah, there was obviously lots of games missing games that we know about games that were rumored things of that nature the games that we know about that were missing perfect dark fable hellblade 2 so to me that says those aren't coming out until mid 2023 at the earliest okay whatever was there enough stuff to supplement these announcements that we got to make xbox fans happy between now and that time frame i'm not quite sure you know i, I really wish forza would have come out this year i think that would have definitely helped xbox with their their game lineup because really when you look at it 2022 is a wash you know 2022 is a wash as far as big titles are concerned exclusive titles are concerned things of that nature you have some smaller things you know that have potential but in the grand scheme of things there's nothing to really wow you that's coming out in 2023 we did not get any sort of banjo things suck it mbg you british son of a bitch you lied you lied to the world about banjo and really you know no golden eye either i thought that was kind of weird like a lot of these games were not nearly as interesting as a game like a golden eye would be and i just felt like there wasn't quite enough of that wow factor and that pizzazz factor like forza motorsport was definitely the game that stood out the most to me because it felt like the most advanced sort of thing within a franchise it felt like one of the most advanced racing games that i've ever seen on a console whereas everything else just felt kind of you know very samey it's very familiar a lot of these games they were either like hail satan or hail children like it was very weird just how, how the whole dichotomy of it was but what is my overall thoughts about this presentation i mean it's sort of the same thing you have to you gotta wait you gotta wait until 2023 to play forza and starfield and they're scheduled for 2023 but they were they're also scheduled for 2022 to begin with and then we have to wait a little bit longer so i'll 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 say i'll give microsoft one more chance i'll give xbox one more chance if they could actually come out with these games 
in the first half of 2023, like they're saying, and they end up being really good games. I have questions about Starfield. Forza, I think, is going to be freaking amazing. But I do have questions about Starfield. Then maybe, you know, maybe I, I can forgive them, but I just feel like it's the same old, same old. It's you got to wait a little bit longer. We have showed these games before. We've talked about these games before, but you got to wait a little bit longer. 2022, eh, you know, 2022. It's a, it's a wash year. 2023, though, that's when all the stuff is going to happen. And I feel like I've been down this road with Microsoft before. Overall, it was okay. You know, it wasn't, wasn't super groundbreaking. I thought it was kind of a weird decision to only focus on stuff that's scheduled to come out in the next 12 months because you also pretty much confirm that a lot of games that people are looking forward to are not coming out within 12 months. So, you know, you kind of got to look to the future. And I, I just feel like I've been looking to the future with Xbox for a very long time. Also, leakers took an L on this presentation. It's gonna be a Gears of War collection. It comes out this year and Banjo and no, no. But let me know your thoughts on the presentation. Do you, am I being too harsh on Starfield? You know, some people seem to agree with me. Some people not so much. I don't know, man. Starfield just something that looked off. It looked a little bit mid to me. What were your thoughts overall on the presentation in general? And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share this video around to share the good news or the bad news of the Xbox presentation, hit that bell notification so you don't miss any uploads on this channel. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later. I did the finger too soon.